So today, we're going to talk about herniation. And the vital signs are almost the opposite of shock, yet they confuse people quite a bit. So um, we've been struck on the head, and we have a hematoma building within our head, and that blood begins to gather, and it starts don't have to be big uh, medical technology here, squishing the brain down. Now, it only takes about 50 mLs of blood to start putting pressure. It's a closed container. So herniation is when we take and our brain starts going and it's pushed down through that large hole in the bottom of our skull where our spinal cord comes out, the foramen magnum. And the things that get pushed down there are very important, our brain stem, especially our medulla. So what we see is as the brain starts to increase pressure and it's being pushed down, the brain being in charge of the whole body says, I need oxygen and I need glucose, but how am I going to get it? The pressure in my brain is increasing. So what do I do? I raise the blood pressure in my body to help fight against the increasing intracranial pressure. So now for my blood to pump out the aorta, up into my head and then get into my brain to counteract that pressure, my blood pressure sometimes gets ridiculously high. We might see 150 over 90, and we may see 180 over 100, 220 over 120, and the blood pressure rises and rises and rises. Why? Because it's fighting it into the brain where all that pressure is building. That's why the blood pressure goes up, right? The body's saying we must feed the brain at all costs. But the body doesn't always get the memo out to all parts. So if the body said, another part of the body, our pressure receptors that we have, our baroreceptors, um, then they say, wait a minute, this blood pressure is getting crazy high. If we don't stop this, it's going to be really bad. So it sends a message to our parasympathetic nervous system, and it slows our heart rate down. Why does it slow our heart rate down? Because if I want to lower blood pressure, I have two choices of what I can do. I can reduce my stroke volume or I can reduce my heart rate. So by reducing the heart rate, another part of my body is working against the part that's trying to feed my brain that says high blood pressure. My baroreceptors say this pressure is too high. The engines can't take much more of this. So they say, bring the pulse down. To reduce the cardiac output is one way of of fighting that elevated blood pressure. The body is almost fighting against itself. So we have elevated blood pressure, sometimes very, very high, 220 over 120, 230, I mean, very high. But our pulse drops because the body is trying to deal with that increasing blood pressure, knowing it can't stay that high for too long. Something is going to go wrong. Elevated blood pressure, decreased pulse. Now, let's talk about respirations. In increasing intracranial pressure and herniations, we start to put pressure down on our brainstem, which controls our respirations. It starts to malfunction because we put pressure there on the respiratory centers. Now, there's lots of different types of respiratory patterns. Uh, I got to tell you, um, they're very difficult to tell apart. And if you see uh, what's ultimately referred to sometimes as Cushing's triad, where we have an elevated blood pressure, a decreased pulse, and irregular respirations, that's Cushing's triad. That generally indicates increasing intracranial pressure. You take that and you combine it with a, a recent uh, trauma, maybe you're working in a car crash, or maybe someone had a head injury uh, last night and uh, the hematoma has been slowly building. But you work those things together, and this is the opposite of the shock scenario. Increasing blood pressure, decreasing pulse, and irregular respirations, sometimes called chain stokes respirations, uh, in a crescendo, decrescendo pattern. We breathe really, really deeply, and then we breathe very shallowly, and then again very, very deeply. But irregular works there too. You put that together, and you need to get that patient into a place where they can have um, someone relieve that pressure and hopefully save their life. Identifying these vital sign trends um, is really the first step in you making that happen.